thank you for coming on, but you're welcome for having you on because you're you're, you're going to be popping some goals here lately, uh, soon, I should say. But anyways, uh, thanks for coming on here. Uh, trade went down. Uh, huge opportunity for you. Love what you do as a player. Seems like a great fit so far. How's it been going there in Colorado? Yeah, um, I think obviously it's a bit of a work in progress. I think the, the system's pretty different than what I played in Buffalo, but um, I think it's been pretty good, and uh, the guys have been great, so I've been having a blast. Tell us a little bit about, like, which guys to you since you've gotten there, because I know coming in trade deadline this kind of late in the season, you need some guys to kind of, like, help you out, some older guys. Who's been some guys in that team that have really kind of welcomed you and shown you the ropes and said, like, this is Colorado-style hockey? Yeah, I mean, I think – the leadership group here is so strong with, with Nate and Miko and Kale, and, you know, you can keep going right down the list. Um, pretty much just get in line and, and follow what those guys do. And um, But everyone's been great. I think we had four new guys get traded right around the deadline, so I've been hanging out with them a lot. And, um, yeah, the team as a whole, though, we just had a nine-day road trip, so got to know everyone pretty well on, oh, on that one. That's the best. Who's your dinner guys right now? Uh, right now, it's... Duhame and Walker, a couple of new guys. We've been we've been hanging out a lot and, and following each other around quite a bit, trying to figure out the ropes. But um, you know, it seems like everyone kind of hangs out with everyone here. So um, yeah, I think it'll be pretty spread out coming up. I know, I know, I skated with Duhame a little bit. He's just hilarious, just an absolute doofus. But I love him. <laughs> I love him. He works. Yeah, I've never seen. Been, he works so hard. It's crazy, man. No, he's been great. He's been great for sure. Uh, hey, uh, I want to bring this back a little bit earlier because, uh, you know, you were Mr. Hockey in Minnesota. That's a big deal. And uh, well, you played Eden Prairie. You, you, you went to Eden Prairie, right? Uh, we, uh, so when I played uh, for the Wild, I lived in Eden Prairie. So maybe just talk about I was amazed at the community rinks, the Zambonis at these outdoor rinks. Like, I'm talking outdoor rinks, right? Like, it's obviously the... Uh, Minnesota's uh, land of 10,000 lakes. There's places to skate everywhere, but the the, uh, the commitment from the municipalities to have yeah. these, you know, groomed outdoor rinks. It was the coolest thing I've ever seen. You grew up there. What was it like? Yeah, um, that was pretty much my whole childhood um, skating around on outdoor rinks. It's it's pretty crazy the the amount of effort and commitment people put into it. And um, I mean, pretty special to grow up there. I think and obviously a lot of time outdoors and, and a lot of pond hockey i think uh paid its dividends for sure hey so i was uh on uh i was out near like you know bear path out there and i remember the one day i went for a walk with my son and it was the winter we put our boots on we're kind of trouncing through the the woods and there's this little body of water i wanted to look at we come around the corner and then it just opens up into this big lake and i saw so many groomed you know, pond hockey with benches, fireplaces. You see extension cords run up to the house. And then I started going back there on like a Friday night. It's a, it's a different planet. Like just lights are out there. There's games going on, JD, at every spot. I'm like, I would do this every single yeah. weekend, night, everything. I mean, were, did you, was it a lot of times on the lake, uh, on the lakes, or is it just, you know, did you have any cool, did you guys do outdoor rinks at, at your house? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I had an outdoor rink. Um, just a uh, small one in the backyard and not on a lake, but my dad built it every year. And, um, you know, I think October, November would come and, and he'd be out there till 3 a.m. just grinding to get it set up. And, um, yeah, eventually it would happen. And I think we'd play two on two Friday, Saturday, Sunday, every weekend with all my friends. Um, yeah, my whole childhood, that's pretty much all I can remember doing is, is playing pond hockey with my friends and, and my brothers. So. I uh, did a lot of growing up out there for sure. Now, when you go back in the summer, like how great are those? I always found Minnesota was such a great spot to train in the summer and skate because you'd have the, what's the, the beauty league or? Yeah. And you had just so many amazing things. Like who's, who's your skating group and like how much fun is it to kind of be out there? And I always like to say iron sharpens iron. And, and it just must be so incredible to be on the ice with all these guys that you're playing against now. Yeah, um, it's it's pretty crazy. I think, uh, especially all the guys from Minnesota, they probably live within 20 mile radius of each other. So um, there's plenty of good skates, and um, 
some of the guys I skate with the most, probably Justin Fall, Nick Letty, um, Brock Besser, Mikey Anderson, Joey Anderson, bunch of guys. I mean, I'm kind of all over the place bouncing around, to be honest. But, um, yeah, the skates are, are really good. And there's there's so many players in the area. I think, uh, like you said, iron definitely sharpens iron. Yes, it certainly does. And speaking of iron, your Buffalo Sabres teammates, like, I know you played your whole career there, and, and you probably thought for, for a second you might play your whole career in, in Buffalo and be there forever. So what are you going to kind of miss about being there with the guys and, and any guys in specific that kind of are close to you and you've grown with that you're going to now miss kind of getting over to Colorado? Yeah, I think I think that's the hardest part, right, about, about being traded is obviously you have a lot of special relationships and, and play with these guys for a long time. Um, such a great group of guys there i think uh yeah i look at the picture i think ras and tucky of course I, I came in with ras lived with them for four years so um he's one of my best friends on the planet for sure and a lot of guys come to mind though i think jeff skinner re really took me under his wing and um really helped me out a, a lot when i was young and now he's a, a great friend and, um yeah definitely i think pretty much everyone i was i was really close with so we're gonna miss a lot of those guys for sure did you say you lived with Rasmus for four years? Yeah, four give me your, years. Give me your uh, funniest Rasmus story. I don't want to put you on the spot, but give me like one uh, thing. Give me the funniest thing. And don't worry about it. It's, it's, this is NHL players only. No one's going to see this, so you're fine. It's just the boys. Uh, the best Rasmus stories for me are uh, we would just sit, sit in the living room and watch hockey and I'm not going to name names, but uh, I mean, he would just, he would get so angry watching other guys score and, and play well. <laughs> I, I mean, you know how he is. He's so competitive. Um, I, those are, those are the funniest stories. I won't name names, but um, watching him sit there getting so angry watching hockey was, was always hilarious and definitely something I'll miss for sure. I, I used to, I used to be like that. And obviously I'm not even close to his level, but I can, I can imagine he's like watching a guy score me like this guy's brutal. Like, I can't believe he's scoring. Like, what a horrible hockey player. I'm way better than him. And I'd be sitting there. Pretty guys much. in the room would be Pretty like, much. I'm sure guys in the room are like, man, like, this guy's unbelievable in the league. And he's like, it's not that good. That's <laughs> oh. a little bit, yeah. But I hit it yeah, on that. Yeah, he's a competitive guy. Competitive guy. We Very competitive. We had him on players only earlier in the year. And um, I don't know who was. I think Boyle was on with me. And he said to him, like, you know, we got the new contract. Said, hey, did you buy anything with you, you know? You're probably expecting, like, oh, you know, I bought, you know, a watch or I bought, you know, buy anything. He's like, a new house. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Just real casual. <laughs> Got a new house. Yeah. Like, All right, there we go. But anyways, uh, Casey, want to get to this part. Uh, we're going to show you some pictures, videos. It's called What Were You Thinking? We just kind of want to know that. What were you thinking in these moments? And, hey, dude, I hate to do this to you, but you've had this monster career so far. we got to start with this, oh, man. Oh, shut yeah. up. You, you are a player now, and you're on this cup contender, a big missing piece for them. Let's go back. This is a humbling moment, no? Uh, yeah, I mean, I was I was 18. I played high school hockey there before. I, I didn't really know what the gym was, to be honest. But uh, I think I could do a few now. Maybe. We'll have to see. Hey. Nobody wants to be the best at working out. That's all you got to tell them. And just say, look at my, yeah, look at my goals here. I played with a guy. I won't name his name. Uh, he would get the fitness testing for the season. He'd get it in the summer. And the only way he would train is he would just do the fitness testing. <laughs> That's all he would do. So if it was a pull-ups, bench press, he would just do pull-ups and bench press for the whole summer. He won the most fit every single season. And he's won, he's won a Stanley Cup. Smart. He's won a Stanley Cup. He's still in the NHL. So just tell him to touch grass if they give you a hard time about that. <laughs> That's smart. That is very smart. All right. We got another one here. What we got? Oh, boy. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, that's probably, honestly, maybe the best goal I've ever scored. So I don't really know what I was thinking. I'm sure I blacked out in the moment a little bit. But, um, I mean, it's World Juniors. Mm. I think oh. we were down a goal. Oh. So, um just trying to do whatever you can, and uh, I got pretty lucky. The D kind of moved the wrong way and helped me out a little bit, for sure. Apparently, that D man, they said they took his passport away after that, and they didn't let him back <laughs> in the country, so he, he's hey. got you to thank for that. How, talk about that team, though, man. That that team was special. Like, just touch on that experience, and, I mean, you were lights out in that tourney, so just kind of take us through that and the fans, like how amazing it was being with that collection of guys. 
Yeah, uh, we had a great crew. Uh, I think we had Brady Chuck, Kyler Yamamoto, Adam Fox, Ryan Lindgren. I mean, a bunch, bunch of good players, really good players. And um, I played with Brady and, and Yamamoto, actually, so good line mates. And um, it was a blast. So it was, it was pretty cool for me, too, because it was in Buffalo. So I had a little uh, preview of, of what was to come. And, um, yeah, I mean, anytime you get to wear the, the USA sweater, it's obviously a huge honor. And, um I think World Juniors is is near the peak of that for sure. So hang on a second, because I feel like this rarely happens. If you you guys won bronze, bronze yeah, and you were MVP, Lights out. MVP <laughs> and best forward, right, yeah. on a team that didn't win the gold or yeah. silver. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I don't do the voting, but uh, that's yeah, why I, I said it. lights out. <laughs> wow, that's impressive. That's impressive. What else we got here? Let's let's show the next one here. Oh, uh, I think this is RJ's last call in Buffalo. So um, that, I think that's probably the special thing, right? I think I didn't really realize what RJ meant to to the Sabers when I got there, but um, after probably a couple of months, I I had to figure it out. I mean, he's he's up there with the players and and the French connection, really, to be honest. So. Um, to me, his last call was, was pretty cool and uh, pretty cool to have Cuzzy in it, too, for sure. Do you ever go back and rewatch that clip just to hear that call? Because, I mean, just he, he's one of the, the greatest, if not the greatest. And, and he's so good. Do you just get chills when you listen to that every time? Yeah, I mean, I think I, I hadn't seen it in a while. And then once I got traded, I see all the, the thank you um, videos or, or whatever's going around. And obviously, that was a, a big part of all of them. And, you know, I, I think that's that's probably one of my best moments, if, if not my, my favorite moments of, of being a Sabre, for sure. I think um, to see what he means to the community and, and to, to have that as under my belt to be his last call is, is definitely a, a huge honor, huge honor. Oh, that's super special, man. Super. All right, what we got here? We got the last one with sound here. Yeah, listen to this one. I took a shower washing every part of my body with actual soap, <laughs> including all my that's major crevices so in good. between my toes and in my belly button, which oh. I never did before, but sort of enjoyed. I washed my hair with Adult Formula shampoo and used cream rinse for that just wash shine. I can't seem to find my toothbrush, so I'll pick one up when I go out today. Other than that, I'm in good shape. Ah! <laughs> That's so good. Hey, coming from That's someone. That's the last thing I expected. It's coming from someone who probably has watched every, probably most of us do, Home Alone. Yes. At least 50 times every yeah. Christmas season. You nailed it, dude. You sold it. It was good. Oh, well, that was probably like take 55, to be honest. I had all the people holding up note cards behind with the lines and. I got a lot of peer pressure from from teammates to to do that. That was extremely far out of my comfort zone, but I actually I actually do think I, I did a pretty good job. To oh be yeah, honest. it's I, pretty funny. Did it's you ever funny. did you ever wonder what Kevin's dad did to afford a house like that and first class tickets to that amazing <laughs> vacation and nine hundred kids and, and family kids. and everyone? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. He's probably Rasmus Dahlin's dad or something, or it's Rasmus. It's Rasmus. Like <laughs> That's that. Rasmus's house, Eric. Yeah. That's yeah. Rasmus's new house. It's pretty close, to be honest. Oh, I love it. That's amazing, buddy. Hey. I mean, listen, if this doesn't get you a bump, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, 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 like I told you before, I'll see you in a couple days. I'll be up there in uh, Colorado. You guys are playing the Penguins, and uh, I'm expecting good things. I'm, I, I'm going to be on the wrong side of the call, probably, because you came on here, and you're going to get a big bump. So. I'm going to probably s sprinkle a little something on you over one and a half points. Oh, okay. so, so just yeah, have a good one. No, I'm just teasing. You can't, you can't get him in uh, trouble here. Hey, we are. I mean, I, yeah, I'll take anything for hey, sure. We're super uh, pumped for you on this run, man. Enjoy every second of it. Keep doing your thing. We enjoy watching you. Awesome. Thanks for having me, guys. All right.